Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What's up, fourth grade, and welcome to episode number six of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. Y'all, I'm totally stoked that you're here today. I can't wait to work with you. What I would like for you to do now is with your worksheet, go ahead and solve number one and number two on your own, and then you're gonna come on back and see me to check your work and pick up any helpful strategies that you can. If you're saying, Ms. McCarthy, I don't have access to the worksheet. What worksheet are you talking about? There is a link below. Go ahead and click that and you will get the worksheet Sheet for this video and the other videos that I release in the Math FSA Bootcamp series, all right? So go ahead, press pause, try it on your own, and then come on back and see me. I'll miss you. Bye. Welcome back, everybody. Let's go ahead and check out number one. First, I'm just scanning the problem to notice the question type. What kind of question type do you think this is with keywords like select all and several answer choices? Yeah, it's a multi-select. Write that down if you did not already. That means we're going to have to go through each answer choice and keep it or eliminate it. And it's very possible that there could be more than one answer choice. We don't know how many answer choices, but we're going to figure it out. Okay, let's read and mark up our text. The first number in a pattern is one. So a pattern. The pattern follows the rule. Here's the rule. Multiply by three. Select all. Means we're gonna try all, look at all, work out all. Select all the numbers that will appear in the pattern. Okay. Well, I think the best way to do this is to go ahead and take the pattern and work it out and then see which answer choices pop up, right? So the first sentence says the first number in our pattern is what? One. So let's go ahead and write one. And usually with patterns, with numbers like this, we'll separate each term. This is a term, each term with a comma. We know that the pattern follows the rule multiply by three. Okay. So up top, what is one times three? Three. So the second term would be three, which is an answer choice. All right, now let's find the next one. So we're gonna follow the rule, which is multiply by three times three. So three times three is, well, let me use the multiplication mashup to help me. It is hit me with my threes pretty please. Three, six, nine, nine. Is nine an answer choice? Yes, and what number did we skip? Because these numbers are going in order from smallest to largest. We skipped B, so we can eliminate that one. All right, so now we're gonna do nine, and our rule is to multiply by three, okay? Nine times three, I'm going to do the nine song now from the multiplication mashup. 
You got those nines. Nine, 18, 27. I'm gonna stop right there because that's three, so 27. By the way, the multiplication mashup is a song that you can find on YouTube. If you are not super quick with your multiplication facts and you're having a hard time with it, or even if you just wanna practice some more, I encourage you to check out the multiplication mashup. I will link that in the description box below, okay? 27, let's find the next term, which would be times three. I don't have a multiplication mashup for the 27, so I'm gonna work it out over here. Now, I'm gonna solve it the partial product way using the area model. So three times 20, well, three times two would be six, and then we add a zero, because it's a multiple of 10. And now three times seven is gonna go in that box, so hit me with my threes pretty, please. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 21. And now what do I do with these two partial products? I add them up, so 60 plus 21 would be 81, which is an answer choice. All right, let's look at 29. Well, we skipped over that, right? So we can eliminate that. And if we did 81 times three, wouldn't it be way greater than 89? Yeah, so we can go ahead and eliminate that one too. So the correct answers here are A, C, D, and F, all right? Check your work. If you need to copy down any of the work that I did, please take the time to do that now. And let's move on to number two. We are back with number two. Let's give number two a try. Whoa, there's a lot of words here. We should probably just give up. That sounds like a good idea. Wait, did that just come out of my mouth? We don't give up. No, we're gonna tackle this. We're gonna take it one step at a time. It shouldn't be that complicated. We're just taking it one step at a time. And before I get started, let's identify this question type right here. I see statements right here with choices. Like I have to fill in the blanks to make the statement true. So this is an editing task, which seem a little scary on the surface, but once you break them down, they're sweet and cuddly. <laughs> a pattern is shown down here. This says term one has one dot, term two has four dots, let me jot this down. Term three has three, six, nine dots. Term four has four, eight, 12, 16, 16 dots. Let's complete the statements below, down here, about the pattern. Fill in the bubble before the choice that is correct. The rule for the pattern is, oh, so we have to figure out what the rule is. Because they've already given us two possible answer choices for what the rule could be, let's go ahead and read them, that way we can think about them. So the rule for the pattern is, add two to the current term number to find the amount of circles in the next term, or multiply the term number by itself to find the amount of circles in that term. I think I just said term like 20 times. And then finally, using the rule, the number of circles in term six, which doesn't exist up here, is what? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so this one says to add two to the current term number. Let me try that out first. So here's one, here's term number one. So if I added two, that would give me three to find the amount of circles in the next term. So are there three circles here? No, they're not. So that doesn't make sense. Let's check the other one just to make sure because this, I mean, I'm thinking that it's going to be B just because we eliminated A, but let's make sure that B makes sense to us. Multiply the term number by itself. So let's pick a term number. Let's pick term number three. Multiply the term number by itself. So if this term number is three, itself would be three. So multiply it by three to find the amount of circles in that term. Well, three times three, we've got three going down and three going across, that's an array, and that does give us nine. So this makes sense, let's see if it makes sense for four too. Term number four, are we multiplying it by four? Four, eight, 12, 16, we are. So it is B, we do multiply the term number by itself, like this, to 
times two would give us four, and one, one times one, does give us one, so it would be B. It would be B, 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 B. Sweet. Using the rule that we just identified, which was B, the number of circles, or dots I've been calling them, in term six. Well, if we had term six up here, and we multiplied term six by itself, six times six, let me use the multiplication mashup to make sure if I'm not sure right away. Or you could draw it out. Hey sixes, I just met ya. You're kinda crazy. Six, 12, and 18, 24, and 30, 36. 36, is that an answer choice? It is. It is 36. And the crowd goes wild. See, sweet and cuddly, that wasn't so bad. You just have to break it down and mark up your text to make it make sense for you. If you notice in the Math FSA Boot Camp series, I'm always writing my journey on paper. That's what I would do even if I wasn't trying to record an episode. I always do that to solve my problems. Make sure that you're doing that too. It helps you to catch mistakes. Now is the time that I send you on your way with some more practice if you need it. And patterns tends to be one that students do need help with. So first, I would like to point you in the direction of McCarthy Math 155. You'll see that in the link below. Check out Unit 5, Days 60 through 62 if you are a member. You can check that out right now. If you're not a member, you can totally get yourself a free 7-day trial to try it out. Tons of students, teachers, schools, districts are using McCarthy Math 155 in their classrooms or virtual learning at home every day. So check that out. Kids are loving it. Honestly, they beg their teachers for it every day, which is awesome. Begging your teacher for math, totally awesome. The second link that I would like you to check out is to the How to Pass the Math FSA series. This was a series that I created a few years back when the FSA was a computer-based test. So you'll notice that it looks a little bit different, which is why I created this series, the Math FSA Boot Camp, to reflect the paper-based test that you will take. Still, the How to Pass the Math FSA series, those videos are still helpful. I encourage you to check those out as well. You heard me jamming out to the multiplication mashup. I just love singing it. I love to visit schools and jam out with the students there too. They love the mashup. So if you are still working on practicing your multiplication facts to master them, check out that song. In just seven minutes a day listening to it, you will become so much faster. I've seen this change so much for kids, okay? Fourth grade, fifth grade, middle school, high school, college, in the real world, you're always multiplying. So get quick with those facts. It is not too late. Check it out. I'd love to invite you to my social media platforms. That way you can stay in the know with everything McCarthy Math Academy. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. And of course, I'm here on YouTube at McCarthy. McCarthy Math Academy. While you're at it, why don't you go ahead and tap that like button to let me know that you found this video to be helpful. And I encourage you to subscribe, that way you're the first to know when I release a new video. And finally, before I go, I just want you to know that you were created for a purpose. That's right, you are the ones that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness and you always have the choice to be kind. And with that said, I will see you all on the next episode. Bye.